come to any soul whose honest motive is to do the best. Every soul who desires to serve will find the opportunity provided. That means when you leave here this morning, you're going to be provided yet another opportunity to serve. I'm not here to tell you what that opportunity is, but I am to tell you it is directly from God. It is directly from God. And how you respond to it is your opportunity, your chance for growth, your chance to reflect the light. Absolutely. Is it going to be your favorite opportunity? I don't know. Maybe that speaks more to who you are. Is it your favorite opportunity or not? But it will be there. Another, another saying of Silver Birch, I know of one religion only. It is service. So all the trappings of the earth plane, that's all they are. It's fine. It's fine to be in this beautiful chapel. It's fine that the Catholics have a beautiful church with statues and that Jewish people go on Saturday and worship. It's fine for all these expressions to happen, but they're merely outer expressions of what is real. And the real religion involved here is service. So today, I want you to take that in your hearts, think about it, and be adventurous. Find out what comes to you this week. Find out what presents itself to you. In John chapter 8, Jesus makes a statement that gets so misquoted all the time, I just can't help but uh, wind up with it this morning. We are always hearing, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Well, I'm not being judgmental, but I'm telling you that's all wrong over there, but I'm not being judgmental. No, 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 no. Yes, we are, but we're not called on not to be judgmental. He says, judge not according to appearances but judge and do the right thing. This is in the newer English version of the King James Bible. He doesn't say don't judge. My goodness gracious, we'd never get through the day. You, you would get up to a stop sign or a light. You have to judge whether that's a red light or a green light, or is somebody crossing in front of you in spite of what the light says. You have to judge and assess all the time. We wouldn't be having this conversation if we didn't do something like that. But what Jesus does tell us is to judge righteous judgment, judge the right thing, and do accordingly. So, in a case of our being in a car, and the light says, yes, you can go, and some poor person is crossing against it, you judge for the higher thing, which is the life and the protection of another being on the earth. You don't go and obey the light. You obey the fact that's a spiritual being, doesn't seem to know what they're doing, so therefore I'll just stay here until they get across. You're judging constantly. But it says judge the right way, not according to appearances. How many times have we messed up in that department? Nobody here has ever messed up in that no. department. I'm so <laughs> glad to be in a room full of people who've never done that. Well, I certainly have. I certainly have. One of my favorite stories, and I will make it quick when it's the last, is that when I was very, very young, I would say maybe late 20s, maybe 30, we got suddenly transferred with no warning whatsoever to Mississippi. And I hope there are no Mississippians in here, and if there are, I'm going to ask you to be kind to me. I consider Mississippi at the time to be the armpit of the United States. I did not like it. I did not like anything about it. I couldn't even seem to appreciate the buildings, the beauty, you know, the history and the beauty. It just seemed like a very rough, unfriendly place. I'm happy to say that because we were stationed there five years, I grew out of that, and I grew to appreciate people for who they are, individuals for who they are, and try to set aside some of the terrible history that's happened there. But at the time I got there, I was angry about the transfer. I was full of judgment. I'm not having anything to do with those people. They're all just dumb bunnies. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> deal with them. And so on and so on and so on. And was I ever judgmental? And something that Jesus, it came up, it kept seeming keep coming up in readings or different places I would be. Judge not according to appearances, but judge righteous judgment. Didn't like that one much. Thought I might skip over to another verse that I liked a little bit better. But that one kept coming back. Got to do your work. Long story short, jo jobs at that time were hard to come by in Mississippi. Even Mississippians had trouble. There just wasn't a lot of work in the 60s and 70s. 
And I finally snagged a part-time job at a little um, department store, a very pretty little place. And I was given explicit instructions on how to spend my time. Now, when this type of customer comes in, you give them all your time and attention because they spend more money than this type of person. And I won't go into the race and the economics of it. You can put that together for yourself. And so on and so forth. And one Saturday afternoon, when there was just nothing going on, we're all just standing there like statues, this woman comes in, and I want to be kind here, but she was just every stereotype that our supervisor had told us, don't pay much attention to this kind of person. She'll waste your time, she won't buy anything, she'll want to try all the samples of makeup, she'll ask you for free things, and then she'll just go home. And something inside of me stirred and said, you know, she's a child of God too. Who are you, Leslie? You grew up in a poor neighborhood. What's your problem? Why are you so special that you can't at least say good afternoon and see what she needs? Or maybe she needs direction somewhere in the store. So I did. I just started out with good afternoon. Did she need something in particular? And from there it went that she needed five different items because five little grandnieces were graduating from different schools and she had saved up her babysitting money for two years. We're talking about a trailer, a white lady trailer type uh, resident who had worked her heart out for two years putting money aside to buy her grandbabies and her nieces something special for their day. When she pulled it out, I was just amazed. Not not just obviously the money, because the money had to cover what she wanted, but how carefully it had all been tied together and, and envelopes that were falling apart and this thing and names on the envelopes. She had almost $1,000 to buy all these gifts. Now, of course, the nice thing is, and of course, you know, my supervisor's thrilled to pieces because people just weren't buying. There was a recession then, just like there were recessions all the time. But it taught me such a profound lesson, first of all, that I listened to spirit, thank goodness, mm -hmm. and secondly, that I saw her as a child of God who was trying to do the right thing, and I treated her accordingly. And I'm not taking any credit here, because I think of all the times we failed there. You know, we've really failed. We've flubbed up. We've let somebody's appearance or their accent or their skin color or their country of origin get in our way. And every time it does, you're going to fall on your face. And you're going to have to do this lesson over and over till you get it right. I was so grateful for that experience. I don't say I never made a mistake after that. But it got me on my way to even appreciate the people I was living around in the state of Mississippi. And interestingly enough, when that healing started to happen, we got a transfer very unexpectedly, which landed us here. We've been here ever since. I, I don't think that was by accident at all. I think that's the way our lives work. When we listen to the great teachers, when we take in even a modicum of what they're telling us, we can arrive safely and soundly and bring all those beings with us, even the ones that don't particularly appeal to us, the ones we wouldn't choose as best friends. It's okay. We're not here just to be about our best friends. We're here to serve and to help and lift up everyone. And I am still grateful, gosh, how many years? It's 40 years later that I had that opportunity in the state of Mississippi. I got to wake up a little bit. I got to wake up. Now, I'm not the Dalai Lama, and I'm not Mother Teresa, and I'm not any other of these wonderful beings we read about. I get my feet in the mud every day just like everybody else. But I'm here to tell you there's enough encouragement in the words of light that none of us need be discouraged with ourselves. None of us need to write ourselves off or feel that somehow we failed. I hope that helps you today. I really prayed over this this <coughs> week because I thought, well, it would be nice and it would be fun just to talk about the 4th of July of what we did. <laughs> But I think we're all confronted with so many discouragements or so many times when we're physically tired and we just don't feel quite up to something that's in front of us 
that we need not be discouraged. It's not about our physical endurance or our physical capability or our shining like a gold coin every day of the week. It's about intention and the power of that intention. And if we truly intend to do what Jesus said, not be the person dressed in the finery sitting at the table, but the really important person who's going around and serving, we can arrive. We can absolutely arrive and feel it and know it ultimately. We not, may not know it in the relative, in the moment, the split second, you know, when our feet are hurting, our back is hurting, we're, we're late somewhere else, and all these things are happening. But you can affirm in your heart that you know it in the absolute. If I'm doing the right thing, it will absolutely come together. If I'm doing the right thing, it will absolutely come together. <clears throat> And I can affirm that and know it because that's what Great Spirit tells us. So if you have a moment this week, besides having the adventure of serving and looking for what comes to you, go online and read a little bit of Silver Birch. I think you'll be very, um, very touched by the words he has to say. <clears throat> and know how many of these wonderful teachers and angels surround us 24-7, anytime, whether we're awake or asleep. They work with us, they love us, and they guide us. Let's take that with us and tuck it in our hearts for this week. Thank you. Thank you.